Our common goal was to celebrate the genius of Lee McQueen. We utilize a form of visual seduction to draw people in and perhaps hide behind the seduction. In shooting this endeavor, it was like a ceremony. Summoning of the gods. Pull back a little more. Hold it like that, that's great, hold it. That's amazing like that. Amazing there. Hold it there. Daphne, you look beautiful. For a long time I used it to kind of like disguise myself. I'm, I'm quite shy and I was very, very shy as a kid. So it was a way to kind of disappear. People look at me differently and I didn't know what that was like. What is it that they see from the outside? And when I look at Daphne, I imagine that it's something like that. I know, and that's why I don't understand when people go, God, you look so weird, and I go, well, uh, I don't understand what you mean. It's, it's just, that's just the way I am. Almost every time I put on a great McQueen piece, particularly certain ones that I, I own, I almost always cry. This is what my natural habitat looks like. I'm choking on a McQueen brace. I'm, I'm curating the whole issue. I told Stephen Gann, I was like, I'm doing everything. Every outfit, every nail, every makeup, everything. And he goes, okay. That's a good way of getting out of it. <laughs> <laughs> After the clothing is made, we then as a community of artists welcome it. And there's an exchange that occurs that, that then we create the context for which their art exists. And that's what fashion is. This is the best of The best trip of acid I've ever taken. Sometimes people aren't moved by what I do on a big scale, but there will be a group that is because they understand and it's about expanding that group of romantics. She was like such a creature. And I thought to myself, if I could find a way to be like that, then I'll be okay, because that is ma it's magical, and it's not any of the things I'm afraid that I am. It's so, something else. So I really always, I'm serious. I always look up to you. Always look up to you. It makes no sense to me that we would be isolated, that it would be competitive. It feels an injustice to art itself. That, that to me is very interesting, because that's, that's, um, that's, that's really how I, I grew up. I mean, I grew up around artists, and, and it's never really my pain is only cured by her. There's some really strong people here all working, but also me and Stephen and Daphne are quite fragile also, if you know us personally. So it's like, that's what I want to see in the, the story. If I wasn't famous and had money to like take care of myself, I would be on drugs, making art, living in a box, because that's what I am. And that's what we all are. We are bonded by our pain. I think most of us feel sort of a perpetual loneliness all the time. And some of us rise to the top and some of us don't, but it's so wrong to not bring those who haven't with us. I'm not the only one. There's so many of us. I meet kids every day in New York that are like, look at my street art, check this out. They, I'm friends with them. I meet them in bars. I give them my phone number. They don't give it to anyone. They send me art all day. I just want to pump as much love as I can into them so that they know that they can keep going and that money or not, it's important for artists to communicate and to be together and we need to exist as a commune. For my relationship with McQueen to have been so brief, it's like somebody handed me a candle and then blew it out. But at least I get to be around his friends and I get to be a part of helping make them feel the impact that they've had on fashion. This is a full collaboration, you know, we're giving a lot to each other. So, I mean, you have to really, you have to really trust each other. I've learned now the best way to take care of the artist. I think that is my, my greatest talent. I don't know that you should be obsessed with how you're viewed. you should be obsessed with how you're remembered.